Hey guys, it's uh, Colonel Corn here, and uh, today I want to talk about squad leading, what I think about it, what I know about it, and hopefully I can pass some information on to you guys. New players, and maybe some old players too will get something out of this too, but if you're new, I just want to go over some of the very basics with you. Uh, squad leading, the officer, what is it, what's it about? There are 14 different roles here that you can choose from when you join this game. I've been playing these games for kinds of games for, for as long as I can remember playing games. Uh, I think the first one I ever played was Battlefield 1942 at my uncle's house. And you could be a anti-tank guy, an ammo guy, a medic guy, or a sniper guy. And those are your four that you could pick. And I always love playing the medic guy, right? But in Hell at Loose we have the officer. This game is modeled after Squad, or, yeah, it's very much modeled after the game Squad. So, we have the officer. What does the officer do? The officer creates spawn points, like, just in the, in the game itself. Right, the game tells you. The officers are a link in the chain of command, between the commander and the troops, under their command in the unit. Through leadership and management, an officer directs their unit and ensures unit cohesion. Sometimes an officer will be responding to commander directives. Other times they will be reacting to battle dynamics. A good decision could save your unit. A crucial aspect of the officer's role is the ability to place outposts and garrisons. These allow your unit, outposts, and the whole team, garrisons, to deploy from these structures. It's vital that outposts are placed near the front line to ensure fallen troops can get back to their unit quickly. Garrison placement should be liaised, that means coordinated, with your commander and other officers. It's often advantageous to spread out the locations of garrisons, to spot the enemy's hidden movements and limit the chance of an ambush. Communication and usage of markers is essential when using the officer role, both to the commander and your unit. As with the commander, officers can place markers on the map, but for their unit only. Don't send your troops in piecemeal. Bring all your unit's firepower to bear when advancing on enemy positions. This means communication and teamwork. That's what the officer is all about. Teamwork. And that's what we got to learn if we want to. We want to get on the competitive scene. We got to learn uh, sticking together, and we got to learn communication. I think we're doing pretty good, but uh, you know, there's some things we can work on. And then we just got to keep that these basics. We get these basics nailed down, and, and we, we're golden. <clears throat> So, we all know the game's mechanics, we know how objectives work and all that, but let's talk about squad composition. So, if you're playing in a game, and I start a match, like, most of the time you're just going to get a bunch of blueberries to join you, but we're in a comp team, right? There are different things you can go over, some, like, advanced flex squads, assault squads, whatever. But, but we're not going to go over that, just the very basics. You're an officer, what do you need? Number one, everyone knows I need a support player. Need a support player because I need them supplies, bro. Need them supplies to build garrisons. What else do you need? Well, you're going to need some way to destroy a tank. And unless you have an assault level 9 with a satchel, which most people don't have, the basic generic, general, run of the mill guy that you have to destroy tanks, it's right there in the name anti tank. So I would say you need a support player and you need an anti tank. I'd, I'd go ahead and say you need to pick up an engineer too. The engineer gets a special class that has a satchel, but his his main thing is going to be the uh, the fact that he can build defenses and he can set up nodes and stuff. So, some way to kill a tank, a support player, an engineer, and then beyond that, that's where you get into like, okay, you're going to need a machine gunner. Machine gunner, you see I'm rocking the bar in this guy. But machine gunner is good for suppressing fire. He can hold a position. He can keep the infantry out. Like, 